All right. Um, let's see. Sounds like it's too friggin' noisy outside. So I'll close the window. Oh, I swear for being like that cul-de-sac because the noise was fucking straight. Anyway, um, so what's new? I guess apparently Nira Tandon didn't get uh, didn't get nominated or you know she's withdrawn from the running for whatever position she was going to be in. So that's kind of good, I guess, you know, I mean, not sure that it matters at all because usually anybody that a president appoints is going to do what the president wants and Biden is already a worse person than Nera Tandon or at least as bad. So <laughs> even if he appoints, you know, Mother Teresa, he's still going to have Mother Teresa, you know, enforcing his, uh, you know, fascist uh, agenda. But, you know, I guess at least for propaganda's value, we could say that uh, at least people got to air their hatred of Neera Tandon, which is good. Um, she's, she's very fascist. I'm not like a super big expert on her because what is she? She's like a talking head. Like I don't really care about her. She's not she's not somebody like Biden who actually has his hands more bloody directly, but I I'm from what I gather she is very fascist, so um I guess that's a good victory just to have her withdraw even if the person that replaces her might just be as bad um what else is new um well it's interesting like i noticed that the big thing to be upset about right now is that texas is opening and withdrawing their mask mandate and they're opening all their businesses and I think maybe Mississippi is as well but meanwhile so is San Francisco basically I mean San Francisco is not withdrawing the ma mask mandate but everything else they're basically opening up and I just I've always found it fascinating how throughout this uh, you know COVID thing like the the Republicans always get demonized for doing the exact things that Democrats get a pass for. You know, like Gavin Newsom opens up schools. No problem. He was, you know, what is he said? He was listening to the science and it's time to open schools. Okay. But if, you know, a Republican does it, then they're literally Hitler. I mean, even Biden himself, wasn't Biden saying to open schools? So it's like, you know, I'm not a fan of compulsory education in the first place. So I don't think you should be forced to go to school regardless. And certainly not if there's a danger of uh, catching some deadly virus. Um, but I, I'm not in favor of like lockdowns of businesses. I think like it's... Uh, it's an overarching power. I mean, if if the government at least, it would make it less bad if the government literally bailed everybody out, helped all these small businesses so they could get by. Um, you know, and I'm sure they are with some, but I'm thinking it's very uneven, clearly, because a lot of these businesses have gone out of business during this crisis. Uh, so, <clears throat> you know, like, but I guess on the positive side, a lot of these uh, small business owners who thought they were like 
the heroes of capitalism now realize like how it all just hangs on a thread and how really the government controls everything you know whatever whatever like little ideas people want to have about the free market and this and that property relations exist as they are because government says so government says you own this you don't own that you own that you're allowed to do this with it you're allowed to sell it to this or that person under these conditions it's all controlled by the government there's not a lot of uh, freedom and we certainly see that with the, the quickness with which the democrats try to lock everything down and and the, and a lot of them seem fine with basically locking the world down indefinitely like like if you if you'd said oh well you know covid is going to be with us so we can never go back to normal we can never have indoor dining we can never have indoor movies we can never have any of that again there's people there are people who would be like yeah that's the responsible thing to do and um so it's a uh, eye opener i guess into how authoritarian the democrats are I mean, the Republicans are authoritarian. Like most of the boomer Republicans, they didn't even never want to legalize weed. They didn't, you know, they're hardcore authoritarians. But the Democrats are too. So it's just literally like, I don't know, Stalin versus Hitler or something. I don't know which one's Stalin and which one's Hitler, but... Um, anyway I'm not sure if i have any hope for this species because i mean people who support the lockdowns are are scum you know like if you want to throw basically everybody in jail imprison them in their own house put them all in house arrest and even though they didn't commit a crime just because you're trying to stop a disease um I mean, like, okay, in their stupid heads, the, those of them that are at all well-meaning, they're thinking like, okay, well, this is an emergency. So an emergency, yeah, you can do this temporarily and it's for the common good. But who decides if it's an emergency? You know, like, it's very easy once you give the government that excuse and say like, oh, well, in an emergency, you can do whatever you want. In an emergency, you can control everybody's movement. Then... The government will find ways to make emergencies you know and even for those who think it's completely an outlandish idea and impossible that this virus was created by the government or by the elites it would be stupid to assume that no future virus could be created by the government or the elites especially if they realize if you tell them like as you are telling them like as the Democrats are basically saying, well, oh, yes, please take all of my rights. If there's ever a disease that's really bad, then the government, which is invested in taking away your rights, basically, um, will listen to that and, and, and they will either potentially create diseases or just allow the proliferation of diseases as a pretext to have absolute power. I mean, it's not a conspiracy theory to think that people in government try to augment their power. You know, it's a stupidity theory to think otherwise. You know, like all of history shows that uh, people in government, they try to use their power to get more power. And the only way to keep them from doing that is just very constant vigilance and basically keeping them from ever having any very much power in the first place just giving them only the bare uh, quantity of power that it takes to do whatever their job is to do um, so i don't know I don't have a lot of faith for humanity. I guess it's kind of like one of those zombie movies, uh, apocalyptic, you know, post-apocalyptic dystopian movies where 
is just a few of us that are are not uh you know there's only like hope for like a few of us that have managed to like see past the matrix or something um although i think like ultimately it's a lot of people once you get out of the western college educated crowd i think college educated westerners are the stupidest people on this earth like i've traveled around a bit talked to a lot of people on the internet and there are a lot of smart college educated westerners but just in general the biggest stupidest most obvious lies are just routinely accepted wholesale by college educated westerners because they're part of this network of people that you know once they see the right signals that say this is what our people are going with this is what the the educated west thinks then the individuals they don't even think they just say oh, okay then that, that's what i think you know because that's where they draw their validity from you know like a lot of people they they draw their status and their sen sense of self-worth from this idea of the superior western college educated uh you know person and so they kind of have to keep feeding that mythology even if it's patently bullshit um so yeah i don't know i mean i don't know if it's worse like i also don't necessarily think that this is a um a hoax or whatever like some people are like oh covid's a hoax um i'm i think that there are aspects of it that are are a hoax like certainly there are things that are proposed as remedies for it that are hoax that are, would not be useful remedies at all and there is a hoax in the sense that in some instances the numbers COVID numbers have been inflated um but i don't know i wouldn't rule out that COVID is very real very deadly and you know but the thing is like we should be watching our you know contagion whatever anyway like we should be washing our hands anyway uh you know not wearing we shouldn't have to wear masks everywhere we go but we should be at least not there should be social distancing i mean honestly that should already be a thing where if you are standing in line with somebody i mean i don't know like i've definitely had people that were like stood in line behind me and they basically were just like up against like my my back like they were just like pressed up against me and i'm like whoa you're not you're gonna have to wait for me anyway you don't need to like be that friggin' close just so you can have that head start when I'm when I'm finished with whatever it is, you know, like I definitely would like to see more social distancing and more hand washing um and more just sanitation in general. And I don't think like even in this all this hoopla, I still don't think people are at all sanitary. Like when I go to stores and restaurants and stuff like yeah they're probably like wearing gloves but it's probably like gloves they've been wearing and touching all kind of stuff so it's like just aesthetic um you know like that's an issue we have to deal with anyway but uh but i'm glad if things are opening up you know at least if the kind of over tyranny of like forcing every go you know business to stay closed or to only deliver or whatever it is 
Um, yeah, I'm glad if that is ending. I'll wait to see if it's really ending, or maybe this will be a temporary thing, and then they'll then they'll say that the COVID's coming back, and then they'll say, "Oh, this proves we can never ever open up." And who knows? You know, like I mean, luckily for me, like I never had much of a life. At least not lately. It's not like I go out. You know, I wasn't really going out anywhere. I mean, I'd eat at restaurants or sometimes, but, you know, I can still get food to go from restaurants. Um, the only thing is I would go to the movies a lot, you know, and like a lot, like often multiple times a week for most of my life. And I can tell you I never got sick from somebody in another row or whatever, like, at a movie I mean I guess I could see if somebody's like super sick and they're like coughing and sneezing and stuff you probably don't want to be like right next to them or maybe right in front of them but at the same time if somebody's coughing and sneezing a lot they shouldn't be like in a movie anyway because they're gonna be like distracting everybody they're gonna they're I mean they shouldn't for contagion's sake and for the the audio sake you know um so i don't know it's a crazy world and i wish uh wish my dad was still alive he's like one of the only people that i think was prepared for all this shit and ironically died like right before you know right at the end of 2019 and uh yeah i wish i i wish he and my sister were still here she was a radical socialist and uh you know probably would have had interesting takes on all of this but anyway um is there anything that's actually been going on lately? Well, Cuomo is getting uh, accused of, you know, harassment. And uh, by, I guess, three different women is Andrew Cuomo. And he's somebody who's already shown to have basically murdered, like, countless, like, retirees, like, uh, by sending uh people with covid into the retirement homes and then giving the retirement homes legal immunity in exchange for basically a direct kickback like a bribe from them um and i think a bunch of other i think gretchen whitmer and maybe a bunch a few other uh, democratic uh governors did this same thing and maybe some republicans too i don't know um but apparently the majority report the people on there were saying that cuomo is going to go down for this because unlike biden where there was just tara reed cuomo has three accusers and also uh, cuomo is known as being dishonest and shady or whatever is like so despicable despicable like it shows how they will like say anything to show for biden you know to stay in the democratic party loyal camp you know like cuomo is like an acceptable sacrifice but biden at this point like you know as soon as he became the nominee basically of the democrats like he became unassailable probably for them so even though Biden has much more um, accusers, he has like 11 or 12 accusers and many more on camera, um, you know, these so-called progressives at the majority report will just say anything to cover for him. Uh, but it's good to see them getting called out a little bit for that on Twitter. Um, 
And what else is going on? I'm banned off Facebook again for my uh, <clears throat> profile picture, which is me. It's basically the Kathy Griffin picture of her holding Trump's disembodied head, but somebody photoshopped it to be Biden's head, and then I just put my head over her head, so it's like I'm holding Biden's disembodied head. So um, that was like my profile picture for a month, you know, starting like January 11th or something. Um, and at one point they tried to like zuck me for it. They tried to like, you know, put me in Facebook jail for it. And I appealed it. And I said that I've seen that there's things like this have already been on Facebook, like the original Kathy Griffin one with Trump's head was already posted on Facebook and whatever, like it was all over the place. So, um, and then they accepted that and they said, we're sorry, we will put it back and you're not, you know, penalized. But then they changed their mind like a few days ago and banned me for a month for that and some other. It's like now they're doing a thing where they like will like say they're going to ban me for like a bunch of different things, but keep not banning me and then save them up and then ban, and then ban me for a month. So I think they might be on the way to trying to delete my account because that seems to be what these platforms do when they're fast tracking somebody for deletion is they they say they're going to ban you for this and this and this, but they actually don't. They actually let you keep posting so that they can, because if they ban you too much, then it takes too long for you to have enough infractions. But if they say they're going to ban you, but then don't ban you and then give you a false sense of security and then just keep racking up these infractions, most of which are total nonsense, um, then they delete you. So I might be slated for deletion from Facebook, which would kind of suck because that's how I'm connected to the most people and I have my archaeology group on there that has uh, 17,000 members in it, which, you know, took me the last uh, five years or something to build up. Um, so yeah, that would be impossible, to, you know, that would be like a impossible to recover from really in terms of uh, But that might happen. Let's see. And Twitter seems to be maybe trying to delete me too. They banned me for posting photos of Biden sniffing girls' heads, sniffing girl, little girls' hair that was publicly available footage from C-SPAN. And um, so eventually I had to remove it. Like I first was trying to appeal it because I wanted to get them to actually put in writing that, because they said that I was sharing uh, child sexual exploitation or the ex sexual exploitation of a minor. So meanwhile, they're talking about Biden sniffing kids. So I wanted to, them to put in writing that they're saying that Biden is a child molester. And of course they never replied. And since I got kicked off Facebook for a month, um, another month after I was only back on it for like a few days, um, then I decided to go ahead and like delete the thing on Twitter, which they already deleted anyway, but like they wanted me to click delete so that I could, like it would unlock my account. And it's just the disgustingness of the fact that they're using, um, they're, they're, they're protecting a child predator by saying, oh, if you expose this child predator, you are posting child molestation, you know, so they're using our own language against us, you know, like the language of people who are fighting against this. 
they're using that to suppress the people fighting against us. And, and what's probably even worse is that a lot of people don't even care, you know, like when I tell people this story, people just think it's funny. Like, I think in a society that isn't woefully sick, things like this should enrage people, you know, it should be intolerable to say like, oh yeah, and then the, one of the biggest platforms in the world that people use to publicize and communicate, whatever, they will ban somebody exposing the world's most powerful man molesting children on the pretext that I'm sharing. I mean, I don't know. I guess it could be funny in some clown world way, but if it's not also outraging, then, um, you know, if it's not also angering, then I think you know society doesn't exist like if society doesn't get outraged at outrageous things then there really is no society there's just a bunch of assholes so um so i don't know they need a revolution they need uh, all these child molesters to pay for their crimes Jail for life, electric chair, guillotine, uh, hanging, uh, firing squad, um, wood chipper. Yeah. And, you know, and all the people who are super okay with protecting, uh, with either allowing or, or even protecting these child molesters. Uh, I think at the very least, they should be canceled out of all decent society and never allowed a, a, among children. Then it, this seems to include most boomers, no offense to the cool boomers, but most of the boomers seem to be perfectly fine with either the either rapist Trump or rapist Biden. Just like they were, just like they loved rapist Bill Clinton, you know. So, yeah, like, I'm not just against, like, you know, the government or the CIA. I'm against anybody who's evil enough to protect, promote, or even tolerate this type of shit. I mean... I'd put some distinction between those who tolerate it. I mean, there's just a lot of people who just don't give a shit and they just tolerate anything. And those who actively defend or promote it, it's obviously worse. But neither one is really, like, good. So, uh, <clears throat> I don't know. Still alive as of now. Uh, but uh, we need we need a revolution, political and moral revolution, global in nature. And I don't know how well this is picking up the sound. Maybe this is super quiet. If so, sorry. But I didn't think to put in the headset at the beginning, and then I figured I'd just do it without. So. Over and out. Uh, take care. Bye.